Get ready to sidestep the pain in your life and at the same time create a better future. You're about to learn how a pig rescue mission, a brain injury victim, and Franklin Roosevelt all filled a void in their life and had victory over circumstance. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with unrelenting joy. I'm John Nobotai Svoboda, musician and author. It was the summer of 1921. A man who is physically fit, defined by his doctor as physical perfection, was racing his sons a mile and a half across an island to their favorite swimming hole. They jumped into the freezing water, got out, shook it off, and raced back to have a, a dinner with the family. And while he got up, he noticed that he had some stiffness in his legs that he hadn't had before, a tingling. He woke up the next morning, and that had spread through his entire body. He was paralyzed. That is when Franklin Roosevelt realized that he had polio at the age of 39. That is a terrible thing to have, but they say that his medical condition is the catalyst that pushed him toward being able to reach the level of President of the United States, in which he took a nation, put, him, put the nation back on its feet after the Great Depression and World War II. And he did a lot of other stuff in there. Now, one thing that he did to fill that void of his life, he designed a program to exercise his upper body, which he eventually got the use of his arms back, so that he could maneuver around and lift himself out of the wheelchair and pull himself up to the podium and give the speeches like the strong man that he knew he was inside. And he would exercise four plus hours a day, getting that strength back so that he knew in his mind nothing was going to hold him back. That is how he filled the void of having polio. Now, that story may not resonate with you on a personal level. It's hard to grasp. You know, those are stories we read about, but we don't have to live them. Let me give you one that hits a little closer to home. I was speaking to a group, and the one thing they had in common was they all had a brain injury of some sort. They were either on medication or in some kind of a therapy to develop their brains back. And at one point, I asked the group, I said, how many of you, if you had even the smallest, the smallest solution to getting out of your situation that you wouldn't do everything you could to overcome the obstacle. No hands went up. I couldn't believe it. So I asked again, thinking that maybe I had worded the question wrong. Again, no hands went up. And I said, I don't understand. I thought that you all, you all were gathering for support about how to overcome this obstacle. And one lady, she raised her hand and said, it's easier to take the medication and call it a day. I said, well, let me share my experience with you. I have also had a brain injury. And it wasn't to the degree that I had to have surgery, but it was to the degree that I had extreme distorted thinking, emotional upset. I had uh, ADHD to the, degree, to the degree that I could not read a paragraph and comprehend what was in it. I was also in the middle of getting my psychology degree. I took a test, an ADHD test, which said that I, I suffered 90% of what I guess they would call the symptoms or the onset of it. I decided to conquer, to fill this void of my own. So in my spare time, instead of sitting around and feeling sorry for myself, I decided to do anything I could about it. And I did, I won't go through the details now, but I came up with a group of concentration exercises for my brain. And one of them was I would, I would read a sentence and write down the meaning of the sentence in a few words. I expanded that to a full paragraph. I got to where I could comprehend an entire page in a book without reading it two and three times. I remember, this took a lot of my time, but I was filling the void of that brain injury. I rebuilt it back to the point that I took the same test a year and a half later, and I mark as 10% ADHD, which today I probably have more than that just because of the use of computers and cell phones and all. But I filled that void by exercising, by taking one little thing and, and using it as a solution to build and build and build. These things do not ha happen overnight. 
You have to stick with it. That filling of the void for a better promise of a life takes layer upon layer of, of improvement and progress toward what you know is possible. It's so easy to give up. It's so easy to fill the void with things that are comfort zones. We, we tend to fill voids with scrolling, alcohol, smoking weed, um, TV, ignoring things, denial, gossip, all these things. Now I ask you this, what do those things lead to? Do they lead to anything that really, that really improves your life? Now I know some of you can come back and say, well, some of it's relaxing and that. That's relaxing. That's not filling a void. When you address the problems of your life, when you address what's holding you back and work a little bit at a time and get involved in that solution, you taste something different about yourself. You taste your own courage. You, you move forward in a way that lets you see yourself in a new way. And I would tell you this, folks, you will not be able to progress beyond the way that you see yourself. That's what I want to talk to you about today. How do you fill the void? Most people, when, when we think of a void, we think of a negative thing. We fill the void, the pain of life, with you know, watching TV, scrolling, drugs, alcohol, gossip, just anything to keep us from engaging in the pain of our life, or even just the challenge of our life. Often, we will resort to the comfort zones that we've created to keep us from having to be active on what we really want. I'm not talking about the dreams, the big dreams of your life. I'm just talking about solutions that move you forward in your life and make you become the person that you've always wanted to be. That reminds me of a wonderful lady that I met, Kaylee. She organized and runs a pig rescue center for Kansas City. And she rescues pigs, finds them homes as pets. Yes, full-size pigs, I know. She loves doing this, and it's very involved. It's a lot of hard work. She, she's got a team that helps her out with everything that she needs to, to finish her mission of getting these pigs in homes. So I asked her, after she told me all of the work that she has to do in a week, aside from her job, to keep this going, and I said, why do you do this? And she said, Sometimes you've got to have a way to not think about your life. I don't think it's a matter of denial. I think what she is saying is there is enough pain in life already that if we just sit and dwell on it and do nothing else, we're going to have more pain from the dwelling on it. So she gets busy and she just distracts herself. She fills her void by helping somebody else. And in this case, it's pigs. But she has a lot of energy and joy. It involves her. It distracts her from the pain that she has that's going on, you know, maybe in her homestead or in her life. And, you know, maybe she has stories to tell that are chronic pain that will never go away. She fills her void by rescuing the pigs. And it brings a smile to her face and apparently to a lot of other people that work with her. Another great way to fill voids is to have quality products. You can now get bundles of no bow tie products, including shirts, recordings, downloads, um, coffee mugs, hats, all kinds of things, tote bags to use, all at packaged prices. You, you're not going to get a better deal on these, and they're very useful. And again, they're quality items. So go to nobowtie.com slash new. Now let's get back to the podcast and enjoy. Your troubles will always be there for you. And if you haven't figured that out, I'm the bringer of the bad news. Your troubles are going to be there. You're going to have them in the future. The question really is how to deal with them and how to live a great life in the meantime. In other words, how to fill that void in a healthy way. When you fill a void in a negative way, meaning taking away from life with you know putting on a buzz or canceling out or doing things of denial, the result of it is not going to be an upswing in your life. The result is you're, you're actually creating more of a cavity of void. You've got to choose ways that bring your life up. You've got to find things that address your interests, your own ideas. And 
somehow or another move forward a solution to the problem. The solution is found in my book and many other books, a variety of ways to pick yourself up and reinvent your life in creative ways so you're not always soaking in the problem. Now, next week, we've got a really high-impact show coming on about what to do when your motivation plummets. It's a cliche subject, but we're, all, we're going to talk about what to actually do about it, effective ways to put yourself back in motion with the energy that you need to create the life that you want. Be sure to subscribe, nobowtie.com slash life, and get on that list. We'll give you all the information you need for it. Before I go, yet another musical example cut out by Novo Tie. Have a great day. Do everything you can about it. Now this piece, I don't know if I've ever shared with you, but I'm going to play you the whole tune. A lot of times I play little snippets. I'm going to play you the whole thing. It's um, written by Egberto Gismanti, uh, but filtered through no bow tie.